to be at the epicenter of something like The Hangover, when that hits, did that affect you in any way? That I mean, I have obviously it was a great thing for your career, but how did you? Because you're such a you're such a uh, solid seeming uh, person, <laughs> and you're such a you're you're. Yeah, I mean, you, you do seem like someone who would not be buffeted by the winds of attention and fame, but that <laughs> that Hangover <laughs> film came out. I don't know how you, did you spend it was at least a, one weekend going insane? It was a tornado of, <laughs> of fame and yeah, yeah, to, yeah, a lot of buffeting. Um, uh, yes, the, it, it was very overwhelming, uh, but I also, I, I feel very lucky on that as well because, um, I had my, my public persona had risen gradually and we had like when i was on basic cable on the daily show we had what colbert liked to call toy fame which is like you can still walk around and do anything and you don't get really recognized very often but occasionally you do mm -hmm. and someone at the airport who works at like einstein bagels will be like this one's on the house that's like toy fame and then then i got on the office and i was on the office for a couple of years before the hangover mm -hmm. and that was another ratchet up because that's network television and i was definitely getting recognized a lot more and andy had weird catchphrases which of course ups the ante with public recognition right, and right. people shouting things at you at big the, tuna yeah <laughs> exactly uh, at um you know at, just at, at baggage claim just people shouting that and that still happens uh quite regularly mm -hmm. but um so I had I had a little bit of um, I had some skills set I I guess and just in sort of dealing with that, but then the Hangover was a whole mm, new yeah. level. Like like when the Hangover came out, it was so exciting. Um, and another way in which I was lucky on that one, lucky in ten million ways on that movie. But but Bradley and Zach and I we're all kind of at the same level before that. And so we were going through it together. And I really, like right. if it wasn't for those guys, I don't think I would have stayed sane. But we all had each other to kind of be like, you know, I, I don't know, just to commiserate and and measure ourselves and just be like, okay, who's being, and, and, and I think we kept each other from, drifting too far right. and being too unprofessional. Like, I don't know, it, it wasn't a spoken thing. It wasn't like we held each other accountable by yelling at each other or anything, but it was like, if somebody was out of line it, or, or got, you know, a little too big for their britches, it, you could feel it on the set and everyone would just sort of like settle back in. Course correct. Yeah. Course correct, exactly. And it was a, from a deep place of like, um, of like, we've been, we're going through this thing together, like a, yeah. a bond. It, it was such a unique experience. And I, I look back on it and wish, and it's a classic thing of like, I wish I knew more. I wish I could go through it again with what I know now, because, yeah. because I don't think I, I really was reeling a lot of the time, like in the aftermath of the hangover, just kind of like get like how I was handling my, my, I was getting scripts for all these different kinds of projects. Like, what do I do? I don't know. I was kind of spinning out and panicking right. about different things. Like, uh, like, well, what, what kind of a career do you want? I don't, I don't just want to do comedies. Right. Well, I don't know. This is a pretty killer drama coming your way. And just all these weird conversations with agents and reps and trying to figure out. Right. It, it, I definitely felt a lot of, um, anxiety and, and yes. like identity kind of, uh, just turmoil, and I will say one of the one of the craziest things about a about a like massive jump into fame like that is, uh, and, and this and this is what I think people who um, have never dealt with that or been close to it just can't understand is the just total loss of control mm -hmm. of your environment. So when you are a famous person, uh, you can't uh you just can't stand at baggage claim and have expect it to be normal mm -hmm. and so you a lot of times you, you can 
there are a lot of ways to approach that. You can get very fearful and try to like hide in the bathroom until you see your luggage come out on the carousel mm -hmm. and then run out and grab it and run away or, you know, hire lots of people to do all these things for you or, you know, which I, and I think the best thing is to just kind of like accept the fluid nature of these situations and, and except that the stakes really are never quite as high as you think they are exactly. kind of in your mind I, and just roll, roll with it. And that was, that's been a very positive, I think, lesson beyond the, even the fame question is just like in a, in an approach to life is just being that kind of like the river, like just flowing yeah. in, in those situations. Well, I, I agree uh, at, completely. You are amen. I say to you because it's not, Taylor Swift's fault that she can't go into uh, a Chuck E. Cheese. And, and uh, um, I just know that that's what she wants to do because yeah. we're friends. But um, no, no, she can't because she's Taylor. There are people in yeah, that yeah, yeah. realm. And she's then I think- She's banned from yeah, Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, because of <laughs> some very, allowed. very, very salty language well, well, she Well, she and there. Chuck E. have a bad- She wrote lots yeah. of songs about yeah. Chuck E. doing her wrong. Um, the guy's a rat. Uh, oh. He is. He's literally is a rat. Um, but- uh, but no, I, I think, <laughs> so I do have sympathy for people like that, uh, but I know that um, um, like at, at my, you know, lower level, I know that when people see me and they go, hey, Conan, I go, hey, how are you? And they go like, oh, and they, they say something nice about I like the podcast or, mm -hmm. you know, thanks for the laughs. They go, what's your name? And they'll go like, oh, Steve. And I go like, Steve, thanks. I appreciate, you know. You just, you make it normal and then they're, they're fine. That's yeah. all they want. I think it's about control, like control makes us feel safe. And, uh, and yet we, you can, you actually, if you can relinquish control truly mm -hmm. in you, you will be, feel so much more free and safe. Yeah. And that's, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do. Um, when, you know, you're, going from an unknown person to a very, very well-known person literally changes reality. Like mm -hmm. it changes yeah. how the world responds to you. And I always thought it was funny, like people would be like, you know, when you get famous, they're like, don't go changing. And you're like, well, kind of everyone else is changing in how they're interacting with me. Right. So uh, how can you even tell? Like, am I the same? Are they, is, is everyone like, people that I've known for 20 years are suddenly nervous around me or like, mm -hmm. you know, acting weird and, and you can't tell them don't go changing. Like what, what's the, what's, what's different. It's so hard to parse and figure out, but I do, I, I got to a point where I realized like this, it's my n desire to control this. That's driving me nuts. Yep. And the, once I relaxed into it and, and settled into it more, and like you said, just being sort of gentle and genuine with people for the most part, as long as their energy is nice, then it just goes fine. Yeah. It, it really yeah. goes okay. I mean, I often, I'm at the stage now where I have to tell people who I am yeah. mm. and try and get them to, <laughs> yeah. try and get them to approach well, me. You just go to the baggage carousel even when you're not flying. Yeah. Oh, I, saw, I, I'm a, I spend a lot of time at the baggage, get, at the baggage carousel and I haven't flown in, a, in quite a while. Mm -hmm. I was at LAX. And I hold a sign that says Conan O'Brien. <laughs> well, no, I, I actually saw you at LAX the other day yelling at someone to leave you alone and he was walking away from yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I didn't. I said, leave me alone. I'm Conan O'Brien and I want my privacy yeah and he just was run he ran to his car as yeah fast. it was very no weird. no it's that's become its own <laughs> problem i've created my own negative energy by um trying to force it too much and that was your son <laughs> okay you went too far well your you improv add-on was just insane um my father 